Hmm, big ears. So that's what they do. <laughs> I am Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of the hilarious Salmonella Academy's videos on obscure, obsolete inventions. A lot of them exist in nuclear power plants, so let's take a look. Hey kids, if I learned anything from my middle school career, it's that what may seem like a good idea initially will often be remembered only as a foolish mistake. <laughs> Here's a few pieces of technology. I've seen that thing where it's like, hey, who print 3D printed the save icon? What does it say? Gotta go destroy it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Gotta love the floppy disk yesteryear that have since fallen into total obscurity. So I've always believed that there's no point in having many small things when you can have one big thing. Why have many shrimp when you can have one lobster? Why drink many glasses of milk when you can eat one udder? Why have many cheese its when you can have one cheese then? Mm. And what if that has anything to do with cheese nips? I have many street lights when you can have one moonlight tower. These guys were real popular back in the 1880s and 90s, often standing at over 150 feet tall and illuminating several blocks from a single point. Not very well, mind you. Matter of fact, they were so dim, we didn't even have the conscience to just call them light towers. I had to go and stick the moon on the front so people didn't get their hopes up. But thanks to our good old friend, the inverse square yes. law, you still needed a fuck ton of light to pull this off. So, so the inverse square law also applies to radiation dose. Um, after all, light is a form of radiation, and visible light is a form of radiation too, just not, just not ionizing. And yes, that means your eyes are radiation detectors. It's cool stuff, but yes, you double the distance away from the source, the dose goes down by a factor of four. Use incredibly harsh and UV emitting arc lights instead of incandescent <laughs> all the light of the moon and all the vision damage of the sun. Talk about a win win. Sadly, these beasts have fallen by the wayside over the past century mm. or so. Except for in Austin, apparently. But they use friendlier mercury vapor lamps in them, so they only get half points. Now, anyone who's been around a baby. It's kind of like high mass lighting you see over freeways and stuff, but I guess it's just dimmer. Long enough knows they always have a cloud of ghoulish stench hovering around. <laughs> Jeez Louise, somebody better air out that musty little muskrat before grandma starts drooping again. They could stick him on the clothesline for a while, but no, wow. a little moron. I'm sure he'd find a way to hurt himself oh, somehow. No. Introducing the baby cage. Finally, city dwellers all across the nation have a way of unleashing their postnatal funk on the unsuspecting passerby below. These were in vogue for a while before falling out of style a bit of the way into the 20th century, because apparently society started deeming babies more valuable than air conditioners. I don't really get that's... it personally, but this is also around the time we started putting lead in gasoline. So Maybe that's how John McClane was uh, raised as a baby in there, so he got used to clawing around air ducts. Probably for the best, we kept him inside all day. Matter of fact, it's my first belief that without kids growing up breathing lead there's no way pet rocks would have taken off in the 70s wow alienating baby boomers he's so brave and controversial now in the days between the great war and the not as great but still pretty all right war people were trying to find efficient means of detecting an incoming air attack they climbed their nation's tallest mountains to seek the wisdom of their greatest elders and the wise men said hmm big ears so that's what they did. These giant discs were known as acoustic mirrors to focus in wow. sound over a five meter diameter into a single point. They were reasonably effective as That's so old devices. school. A few of them in Britain were able to pick up the sound <laughs> of the plane from all the way JJ. across the English Channel. Of course, radar came along soon after, rendering these things completely useless beyond looking brutalist as hell. For real, instant album cover material right here. Ah! One of the <laughs> boys is pulling a Spanish Inquisition on this poor wayward harlot. Huh. Just kidding. <laughs> Despite the fact that this looks so very, very much like a state-of-the-art instrument of torture, it's actually just a beauty micrometer. Think those shoe size measure things at Foot Locker, only instead of one primitive measurement, it records the entire topology. Wow. Chin cleftiness. Filtrum distinction. <laughs> Nostril oblongosity. <laughs> General Dumpiness Index, or a GDI. Maybe whoever invented this was part of the Brotherhood of Nod. Face and skull at once. With this data, a trained cosmetologist would be able to pinpoint exactly what features of your head should be enhanced and reduced with makeup. Wow. And to achieve a maximum calculated attractiveness after you've paid for their services. Clearly this device <laughs> must have been effective. After all, beauty is entirely objective. What, I of the beholder? <laughs> Check the <laughs> name. Apparently, though, women didn't like being strapped into a birdcage and having their every minute flaw meticulously laid out in front of them, so this thing never really took off in the end. Next, we I'll share a couple that are from nuclear 
You know those old school orange plasma screen TVs from the, or not TVs, but just screens from the 1970s? Yeah, we still use those at at my plant, and it's because the cost of upgrading is so cost prohibitive. It's the nuclear equivalent of going on eBay and finding a bunch of age-old technology just to replace those screens when whenever they they go bad. It's uh, it's pretty crazy, and yeah, the co other other bits in the control room still use those old analog gauges that you see in movies like the China Syndrome. I mean, they have some digital stuff in plant computers as well, but those old things still exist. And we even still use old school electronics that have master and slave relays. Now, you, I probably can't even say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the good news is, good luck hacking a nuclear power plant because it's, it's too primitive to hack. It's like a reverse Independence Day. The Humlauf. This was a device made during World War II designed to let <laughs> infantry shoot around corners. It's like the Germans sat down and watched that part in Tom and Jerry where the conniving rat yes. the gun barrel back at his <laughs> adversary. They said, Mein Gott. They came in a variety of angles between 30 and 90 degrees, and even came with a little periscope so you could see what you were shooting at. But as we all come to find out when we reach adolescence, cartoons are the arbiters of deceit. <laughs> These things would invariably break within the first couple hundred shots or so. And even when they did work, yeah. the rounds would fucking explode from the massive acceleration turning a deadly bullet into an ineffectual spray of shrapnel. That's true, when you turn a corner like that, all that energy is imparted upon that surface. So yeah, the bullet's not going to survive at anything even approaching high velocity uh, rounds. So ineffective that only the 30 degree model ever saw significant production beyond prototypes, and even that was very limited. So you ever look at regular <laughs> yeah. mouse traps and go, hmm, not enough property damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's the revolver mousetrap. Oh, to you by the wow. The snail trebuchet and the cockroach claymore. <laughs> Thanks to the marvels of the modern era, all those tiresome hours of intense varmint slang can be outsourced to one little gadget on the floor of your kid's playroom. Now, that is so crazy. Of the night, you can rest easy knowing that, one way or the other, there's one less pest for you to deal with. <laughs> Boom, 1850. Steam locomotives wow. are all the rage. You're in the transport business, but all you can afford is a couple dumb horses. Sure, they move things from point A to point B almost as well at a fraction of the cost, but your cool rail riding friends called you a whack ass and it really hurt your feelers. Well, have we got the <laughs> feelers? The Impulsoria uses an ingenious system of treadmills to turn that horse to be beckoned into a force to be reckoned. <laughs> With. Sure, it's expensive as hell to make and limits your services awesome. entirely to railroads. But just look at it. Instant pussymobile. Slap some rims in a small <laughs> uh -huh. and laughing. This machine is recorded at having a maximum output of two to four horsepower, which sounds about right. And it did. I so mean, yeah, two to four horses. Exhibitions. Now, if there's one hobby that people in the past enjoyed, it's smoking. Who boy did they like yeah. smoking? And with Great wholesome activity comes a million novelty items to go along with it. Everyone's seen the long cigarette, but how about the really long <laughs> cigarette? Want to smoke in the rain? Here you go. Going snorkeling? Hey, the little umbrella. Oxygen? Nicotine. But hey, want to know the only thing better than a cigarette? Two cigarettes. You know what? Fuck it. Have the whole pack. You earned it. Of course, if you're trying to cut back, you can always share it with a friend. Aw, how heartburning. But you know what? Heartburning. <laughs> addiction. Man, I like those. All those ones from the 1800s, the time of wacky and inventions um i guess nuclear power back in the 1800s would have been splitting atoms using really really small hammers <laughs> it's a bit of a joke when i talk about some of my really old co-workers that that's how they split atoms back then anyway this i really like this i'm, I'm fascinated by old-timey engineering as well thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time